So good morning, everyone. Uh, today we are here to talk about uh, the troublesome journey that we had when dealing with time. Um, so the topic is time made easy with Pentium. So before we begin, uh, let's get to know some more about us. Uh, my name is Yodhra Aditya, and presenting alongside me is Abhinand C. We both work at USD currently, and we are working on a travel platform called Strollby that lets you travel across the world without the fuss, and it just brings everything that you want in travel uh, into your palms, actually. So, and we also volunteer at uh, Kerala Police Cyberdome, which is uh, a local law enforcement agency. And uh, we created a tool called, uh, we're working and collaborating with uh, everybody with, on a tool called uh, Grapnel that lets you surveil the dark web. And it will probably be uh, launched globally pretty soon. So you might also get to experience that. So let's get to the slides. Um, so it's time to begin. So, and, uh, so what is time? Um, if you have seen the show called Genius by National Geographic, uh, you might have heard about this exact quote that time is but a stubborn illusion by Einstein itself. So this is an interesting quote to us because uh, it unravels a lot of mysteries that you might encounter with time uh, when you are uh, programming, uh, especially in Python. So I'll hand over the slide to uh, Abhinand to present and talk more about time. Thank you, Jodhar. Uh, so time, uh, there are many definitions for time. Uh, sci scientists uh, say something like time is relative. Uh, time is, uh, they have a definition of time, standard unit of time. And we program uh, programmers ourselves have another definition. We define time as the number of seconds that have lapsed since January 1 of the midnight. It's basically what's known as Unix epoch. So, is the unique epoch, uh, unique timestamp the standard that we all follow, or is it not? How do we store time? We actually store time uh, in many different formats like GMT, local time, UTC, and even uh, many more uh, formats that uh, each uh, region adapts to their own, each developer adapts to their own standards they follow. And even uh, using a single uh, time zone uh, time format, we have to deal with intricacies like daylight saving time and other changes that happen politically that causes developers a lot of frustrations because there are a lot of nitty gritty inconsistency that happens throughout uh, the uh, daytime in our development ecosystems. Even our Python's uh, built-in module uh, don't actually uh, help us a lot. We need to have a, a way to standardize things. Why? So, because uh, there are a lot of uh, different, uh, 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 there are a lot of different methods and uh, there are a lot of different communication interfaces that we have. We backend developers have to interact with front end clients and front end uh, teams have to, uh, uh, all the different front end clients live in different regions. So, all those things we need to follow a, sim a simple single standard. So uh, as the Zen of uh, Python mentions it, there should be one and preferably only one obvious way to do it. So uh, we came up with uh, uh, multiple different standards. ISO 8601 is the governing standard that we all follow and it's related RFC uh, that it's uh, RFC uh, 366 that the internet uh, standards follows. And it's also mentioned about daytime in RFC 2822. So there are a lot of different variety of time standards which we follow. And among the most common is uh, ISO standard uh, mentioned in RFC. And here we follow that uh, there is year, month, date, and it, uh, it is then separated by a letter T called time separator. And then we showcase hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, and then finally the time zone. The time zone uh, uh, represented by Z implies that it is Zulu time or GMT uh, with zero offset, or we uh, usually provide offsets like plus 730, plus 530, etc. cetera. So uh, we, uh, even then we have problems representing and passing time zone. There are problems in passing conversion between different time zones. There are many inconsistency caused due to uh, changes in daylight saving modes, 
uh, some uh, time zones may follow a daylight saving some regions may not follow uh, a daylight saving even though initially their offset would be same so even in a single country or a continent there will be multiple different time zones each having even in the same region uh, uh, longitudinally they will have different time zones all this uh, things these minor things add up to a lot in and the development process and they make us uh, frustrated and even political changes or any other people uh, introducing new uh, regions or new time zones uh, have a drastic effect on developer ecosystems we need uh, might need to uh, support more uh, standards more protocol and essentially it becomes a maze of web uh, that all uh, defines even if we solve the time zone issue we have a day, uh, issue of daylight savings uh, that uh, some people adopt and even uh, during election period or uh, some kind of uh, uh, regional politics they might uh, choose to not uh, follow daylight saving for a year or two all those political actions have a drastic Im impact on our development ecosystem and our feasibility and uh, even if we ignore that uh, all our data in python we uh, the default date time usually is nave date time if we do not supply any time zone information no time zone is uh, by default saved so uh, the information about time zone might be lost while communicating from front end to back end and then uh, again to the front end so a person uh, living in uh, asia in india uh, if it says at, uh, at 10 am and the same information is relied uh, to a person in uh, euro that changes uh, would be drastic they might get different times and there would be many meetings or many issues that deal with uh, that causes problems so a simple uh, daytime object created will be a name object and there's another thing that we can support is aware daytime that is time zone aware objects uh, that supported in uh, uh, python's built in module and we can easily use that in pendulum or python set or other information that actually helps to make aware of the time zone rules daylight saving or any other trans transitions and transition that's ha handled by the library itself and this is a quick sneak peek to pendulum how they manage to uh, create a time zone aware uh, date time even if we supply pure uh, uh, from a string we pass a, a time it actually converts it into utc by default if the, no time zone is specified so to create an, a nave time zone in pendulum we need to explicitly specify uh, its as nave so uh, we introduce pendulum it's a, a, a popular python library it's uh, a direct drop in replacement to date time but it is better uh, than daytime as it offers much more handy tools there is no more uh, nave daytime by default and it offers clear simple handy uh, interfaces and provides flexible uh, and easy ways to use apis they provide a lot of simple uh, uh, helper uh, modules and helper methods like add subtract uh, to string to a so string so uh, the uh, starting uh, starting up of the project is very simple we just need to install it from pip or uh, and then uh, we can use it so one of the uh, main feature or the primary features are daytime class or which is the uh, direct drop in replacement for standard daytime class which with which we can easily manipulate our daytimes we can uh, just uh, like the similar to the built in module all the methods are there and also we can use simply uh, easily change time zone by using underscore in helper uh, we can uh, change it into uh, words using uh, st uh, to iso string to wc3 uh, string and even shift add as i mentioned we can easily add day times uh, using a helper add is equal to 2 we can uh, reduce subtract using uh, uh, subtract is equal to 2 or even add day is equal to minus 2 we can easily shift across days times and everything and uh, handling time zones and uh, daytime uh, transition is much more easier thanks to pendulum's time zone uh, class 
which uh, when we define the uh, time zone as Europe, Paris, it actually uh, detects uh, which uh, zone it is if uh, transition is enabled by using uh, daytime's built-in fold, which came in Python 3.6. It has been backported to previous versions also in uh, Pendulum, so anyone can use uh, easily transition between daytimes and switching of time zones is way easier. We can simply uh, uh, change uh, from one time zone to another using uh, the helper, as I mentioned, in time zone or its aliased method in TZ. So uh, our development effort will become easier. And the next uh, module is the duration module, which is a, a drop-in replacement for time delta class. It supports uh, all the similar features, uh, like uh, similar features, and it also has uh, much more uh, uh, better properties. How much weeks is there? How much hours is there? What is the uh, duration in hours or in words? We can even set locale, which uh, language we want. Uh, we can specify in any uh, string conversion, we can specify locale equal to E N D E or any other locales so that uh, the wordings will convert into the uh, specified locales. So uh, handing over to Jodit to talk about the period, which is a, a much better version of the duration. Okay, so um, Abhinan just said that Pendulum is a much better version of daytime. Arguably, uh, you might want to you know, go ahead against that. You have used daytime your entire life in Python, and my clock just ran fine, right? It just never broke. So why use Pendulum? What does Pendulum offer? So aha, I got you there. So I am gonna list out a few features of Pendulum that actually makes time a lot easier to deal with. So when it comes to the period or the inter interval class as uh, it has been renamed by Pendulum itself. So it's inheriting the duration class, which also inherits the time delta from Python. So the period class is represents a period. So very, uh, what, what do you say, intuitive, I guess, right? The name represents what it is. Uh, so the period class uh, is, represents a period between uh, two dates or two times. So if I um, create a daytime object or a period object, I mean, uh, so what I have to do is like create a daytime object first, and then I uh, subtract or add that daytime object uh, between uh, two daytime objects. So it's a period between the, these two daytime objects uh, that we deal with right here. So it can be uh, an inverse daytime where the date that you subtracted is like behind the date that you're subtracting from. So it's like creates a negative uh, representation of daytime per se. So the period class also uh, gives you these methods, which makes life a lot life a lot easier. So it gives you years. So if you define two periods, like 2021 and 2022, if you try, try the dot years method, then you'll get uh, one, right? Because obviously it's one year between these two date times, and you get months, weeks, days, remaining days. How many remaining days to get to the uh, the particular date object? The delta per se. And you also has, uh, have hours, minutes, start, end, and so on. So these methods you can experiment with extensively. So these just make your life a lot easier when it comes to server-based daytime hosting and time, ho time and uh, managing time in general. So the range function, this is also one of the features that you might just adore. You, you, you might just want to hug uh, pendulum by, you know, like tight, tight and uh, squeeze pendulum and when you see this function, because it just makes your time flow like anything. So the range function uh, returns an iterable, which you can iterate over. So it just makes iterating over dates and days and months and years just easier. So it also offers you two methods called subtract and add. So you can iterate, if it's an inverse daytime, you can actually iterate forward. And if it's just a normal daytime, you can also iterate forward or backwards, right? So this day plus one day, or this day minus one day. And, and uh, so you can do those things with these two methods. So this is the exact code that uh, I got from the pendulum uh, source code. So you just don't focus on the amount right now. If you can see the while loop right here, it casts the start date into a pendulum daytime object first. And then what it does, 
is uses the method which previously defined is either add or subtract. And then you, uh, it just uses a dictionary unpacking operator to apply th that particular method to the start, met uh, I mean, the start date. So what you can do is actually um, add dates. If you, if you specify the method to be add, then what it does is adds one day along your whatever the daytime object that you specified. So if you, if you specified February 2nd, you can just add one, 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 and February 3rd, 4th, 5th. And you can also go backwards if you subtract 4th from 3rd, 2nd, 1st, and so on and so forth. So that just makes iterating over um, dates much easier since also it is a lazy field. So it's an iterator. So you don't, you don't have to, uh, I mean, uh, adhere with the overhead that some other solutions might provide. So the day of the week, you might have seen some mathematicians and even some comedians, like uh, if you ask them the day of the week, they'll just spit it out immediately. They are probably using the Zeller's congruence, which is an algorithm or which is an equation that you can use to simply just, you know, um, find the day of the week immediately. Even if you mention like, uh, if, what, is, uh, what is the day of uh, the date of 1864, uh, February 3rd, what is the date? You can just plug that into this particular equation and you can just output what that day is like on spot, right? So if you look at this equation, I'll explain this equation uh, in more detail, like um, uh, to identify leap years and so on. But let's just uh, skip over to the next slide. Aha, so leap years, right? So what is what are leap years? So leap years occur every four years. So every year there are 365 days and six hours that just um, add up, right? So thanks to Gregorian calendars, you just have to deal with that. That's just your life from now on. So if you have a grudge with Pope, you can fix that now. Uh, just install Pendulum and you have implicit leap year handling. That is a much better way of uh, handling day, uh, uh, leap years. So, uh, okay. So when it, uh, you can see right here, this is the Gregorian rule, right? Every year that is divisible by four is a leap year. So, but if the, if the year is also divisible by 100 and not divisible by 400, then it's not a leap year, right? So it needs to be divisible by four and divisible by 100, but at the same time divisible by 400. So then only can you like predict a leap year. So that's a simple equation, right? So when it uh, comes to this equation, you can see right here, uh, how pendulum handles um, leap years. So in this example, you can see uh, I'm creating an object of uh, a pendulum daytime object that represents the date 2024, February 29th, which uh, only occurs when a leap year occurs, right? So the 29th of February is an accumulation of six hours that you built up over four years into one day that, have is, that has been squeezed into the 29th of February. Again, the Gregorian calendar, uh, but it is the best calendar that we have yet, and it just works, right? So, so how does Pendulum identify leap years? As expected, it just uses the Gregorian calendar rule. It's simple and easy, no need to change it, it just works. So this function, when you look at it, it's pretty quite simple. If the year is divisible by four, and the year mod four equal to equal to zero, double equals zero, then and year mod 100 is not zero, or year mod 400 is zero, then you have a leap year in your hand. So it returns true. So if you plug in a non-leap year into this particular function, then you get false, right? So it's a simple uh, function that has been reaped directly from the source code. And uh, next. Okay. So yeah, let me give you a great example of this. So you might identify this state immediately if you live in the United States, but the United States, but uh, if not, this is Arizona. So United States uh, uses uh, daylight savings time. So daylight savings time is a much more complex process that just adds to the complexity when it is completely unwelcome. So this needs to be dealt with. So since we live closer to the equator in India, we just don't use daylight savings time. Saving us a lot of trouble with daytime, right? But we still have to collaborate with uh, other nations, other states and all that, which uh, might be in the form of Zoom calls, meetings, even anything else. So when it comes to those situations, you have to account for daylight savings time 
which is a mess. So in this example, you can see Arizona, right? Arizona, uh, like un unlike the United States, does not use daylight savings time. But even inside Arizona, there is Navajo Nation, which does use daylight savings time, like the rest of the United States. But inside Navajo Nation, again, you have Hopi, which again does not use daylight savings time. Inside Hopi, there is Navajo Nations, a subpart of Navajo, Navajo Nations, which again and uses daylight savings time. And inside Navajo Nations, there's again a, a Hopi Nation, I mean Hopi region that again does not use Navajo, uh, I mean daylight savings time like the rest of Arizona. So if I draw, if I draw a line directly from here, tra traveling through Arizona from the nearby state through Arizona, and if I go to Navajo Nation and then I pass through Navajo again and I go through Hopi and I go through Hopi again and I go through Navajo again and finally I end up in Arizona. This is a mess. You'll be going on your watch like, okay, Arizona, eh, changing the time. Hopi, again, eh, changing the time. Navajo Nations, eh, changing the time. You might have to do that over seven times. Can you believe it? So it, daylight savings time is that kind of a mess that is so hard to deal with like because so many regions and places exist in, on this planet Earth that you just can't account, account for everything. And new daylight savings time rules might be implemented throughout the years, whenever, like randomly. They do not care about programmers, believe me. So the next side is where we deal with daylight savings time. A cool prototype for you guys to see, by the way. So, and uh, let me, I have created uh, two uh, daytime objects here, one for Toronto and one for Vancouver. And this method that just lets us check if this particular daytime object in that particular time zone is a um, daylight savings time, saving time, time or uh, like period, or if it's not. So this is a handy method that Pendulum just offers for you guys to see, I um, mean, use. So, and then um, we have more methods on daylight savings time, which will be explained by Abin. Thank you, Jodhar. Uh, there are a lot of uh, things that you can do uh, in uh, Pendulum. Uh, Pendulum uh, by uh, automatically normalizes data, uh, daytime uh, uh, savings time for you, such that uh, if you are in uh, Paris zone and uh, 230 in uh, in the Paris of um, for March 31st of 2013 does not exist. Uh, so the pendulum will return the actual time, which is 330 plus two uh, uh, two hours offset. And uh, but but uh, the same time uh, 230 uh, on October uh, 27th of 2013 there uh, exists twice. So pendulum will assume that transition has occurred and it will show uh, 230. Uh, plus one offset. Uh, there's a difference in offset and the time is different. So this is how Pendulum uh, by default handles offset. And uh, we can even customize our offset behavior by assigning the uh, daylight saving uh, rule as pre-transition or post-transition. And if there is any transition uh, issues or errors, we can handle uh, all the ambiguities of the transition uh, through Pendulum. And uh, then uh, once we have uh, all the nitty gritty sorted out, we use uh, multiple different types of uh, uh, helpers and methods to build our application. We would need to test the application. For that, Pendulum uh, supports a simple uh, method uh, using the context, uh, method, uh, context with context manager, pendulum.test, so that uh, we can easily uh, assign a fixed time to uh, that context so that uh, that context will become the current time. Uh, and on exiting the context uh, uh, manager, the time defaults to the system time. time. This is how we can easily test any time uh, for our use cases. And in the upcoming uh, uh, version, that is version 3.0, they, uh, they will be starting using time machine library, uh, which is another, another package. And uh, Pendulum implements a time travel. A traveler uh, method so that uh, we can uh, uh, change the time, we can freeze the time, we can move forward into the uh, past, uh, uh, into the future, and all those things uh, will be done much more simpler. And uh, we can easily implement all our testing 
uh, using pendulum. And uh, to see a, a benchmark of the pendulum, uh, it's actually uh, a detailed benchmark is on, on the documentation itself. It's taken from there. So uh, the creation of objects, uh, the initial daytime object creation of for 10,000 objects, there is a, a vast difference between from arrow, DRN, and pendulum. Pendulum is faster and it has a comparable speed in computing the current time and passing is extremely efficient uh, when we are using pendulum and uh, finally to say about the differences that our applications once we test and host we need to follow certain best practices like saving uh, time in utc and also along with the time zone information and by being explicit about the time zones with aware daytime objects, we can easily avoid the unexpected behavior in the server differences and uh, our daytime predictions will be accurate. Uh, we, uh, if we do not account for the time differences, there will be in, uh, small uh, differences that instead of uh, sending at 8 a.m. in the morning a uh, scheduled message, it will be delivered at seven or nine, depending on their current uh, changes in their daytime saving rule. And uh, that's it, guys. Thank you for uh, listening. And so uh, we really wanted to be there uh, for the presentation, but we just couldn't get our hands on the visa. So sorry for that. And uh, you guys, if you want to connect, you might want to connect to us um, on LinkedIn or GitHub, the same username, Adi Jodar and Abhinan C. So if you have any questions, please do ask. All right, thank you again, uh, Yoti and Avinant. Uh, we have time for one question. Is there somebody in the room right now? I also didn't see anything on the, on the Discord, though. Um, then I would say, like again, thank you. If you come up with any questions, please DM them directly because yeah, they are not here. Um, also, uh, please take your litter with you, uh, and maybe a final round of applause again for them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.